a little bit more. I do want to give you credit. You did. You said right from the start you liked the Chiefs. Yeah. When I think a lot of people felt like it's this was Buffalo's time. Why did you like the Chiefs so much, and why ultimately did they win again? Well, listen, I thought defensively the Chiefs were a much better football team. They got worn out. Physically, they got worn out. Now, in that fourth quarter, if you go back to that fourth quarter, you know, the, uh, here's one thing I don't understand about coaching staffs in general. I am not going to quit doing something until you – change what I'm doing until you make me get out of it. They were absolutely thunder punching the Chiefs in the middle of the football field. They were running seven, eight yards per carry, just a little, I mean, little mid-zone cutback stuff was absolutely destroying, and they were using an extra offensive lineman. Why would you ever get out of it? You know, so many coaches in today's NFL, and even in my time in the NFL, Look at that. Look at like, hey, eventually they're going to adjust. So let's adjust before they do. Mm -hmm. Why? I am going to continue. Like, I am, I'm from this old school mentality where if I am beating the shit out of you, I'm going to continue to beat the shit out of you until you do something about it. It's like rubbing it in when I'm winning. <laughs> like, I'm going to continue yes. to do it. You know, like, I don't understand that process of getting out of that. Now, in the fourth quarter, the Chiefs made a couple of plays in the backfield for minus – they had a minus two and I think a minus four on two opening drives. And then they just started throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd come right back to what I've been doing. So, when you get a minus two, you know what the Chiefs are thinking? There's no way you're going to run the ball again on us. So, they're going to play soft. They're going to try to take their linebackers and drop them at 14 yards quickly. I'm coming right back to it. I'm going to try to bludgeon you. When I can. And I thought they got away from that, and I thought they panicked in that fourth quarter, and they just said, hey, Josh Allen, go win us a football game. You know, and I, I get all the people out there, well, they Josh Allen's not the problem. No, you're right. Josh Allen's not the problem. The fact that you rely completely on Josh Allen in a team sport is the problem. And that comes down to coaching. And, and I got people that said, oh, well, they had a couple of drops. Yeah, like you're, you're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. They had more drops than anybody in the National Football League and still found a way to get here. Now, they made great adjustments, Kansas City did, and they found a rhythm and almost flipped the switch when the playoffs came around. But that comes down to confidence for me. Like there is one team that just knows regardless of what goes down, we're going to make a play when it counts. And there's one team that wonders if they can make a play when it counts. And that's Buffalo versus Kansas City in a nutshell. And that's why I truly had so much confidence in Kansas City going into this game. And I think the mistake that a lot of us made was we we made such a big deal about, oh, Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team has never played a road playoff game. Almost like that it would, I, I don't know, that they would they would shrink Right from the the challenge, right, and and they, mm -hmm. that was probably the biggest mistake we, a lot of us made was well they've gotten so used to playing these home games at Arrowhead they're not going to be able to handle right. playing on the road where I guess we should have shown faith and understood this is a team with all that they've accomplished is going to really relish the yeah. opportunity yeah. the challenge of going into a place like Buffalo and winning yeah the only thing that shrunk from being on the road and in the cold was their man region. That will get some shrinkage. Yes. But for the rest of them, man, they don't – that doesn't affect them. No. I mean, they've played – and I I know I, – I know that they have played the Super Bowls in neutral site, right. but they've been on the road before. And let's face it, like, they are – what, since Patrick Mahomes took over, six straight years they've been to the AFC Championship game. Six straight years, Crazy. and they've got two Super Bowl wins and one Super Bowl loss. I mean, let's let's just face it. Let's let let's. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. They're not shrinking. Like every time they play a team on the road, every time regular season, it's that team's Super Bowl. Yeah, they're getting everybody's best shot every week. They are battle tested. Joe Gibbs used to say it all the time. He'd say, hey, "Guys, we are battle tested. We are calloused." Nothing affects us. 
And, you know, you start hearing that enough and you start playing in those situations enough. You know what you become? You become battle tested. You become calloused. You don't care anymore. It's like you almost relish the opportunity. Let's go on the road and shock some people. Let's go us against the world and let's go prove what we are. And I thought I thought they did that. I thought they did a great job of attacking the middle of the football field, both running the ball, the Chiefs did, and throwing the ball against linebackers that had been injured. Um, and when they had to have some plays defensively, they made plays. What makes this defense so good? If you had to look at this defense, what's the defining trait of this defense because hey let's face it for a long time this season mm -hmm. this defense was was carrying that that offense sure and i think how they do it i think i think you've got stars even though they may not be name stars because you know of patrick mahomes stardom and and kelsey and that's what this team is known for but i think you've got like stars at every level of your defense I think Bolt, the middle linebacker, is a star. Obviously, Chris Jones is a star. And he's got complimentary guys around him. Carl Loftus can really play. And then you've got Sneed on the back end and a nickel corner that's as good as it gets. Like, you've got guys that are as good as it gets. Think about the the, the um, oh, the hips don't lie guy. Uh, Shakira? Yeah. 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 Like, that dude scored the first touchdown given up by Sneed. Yeah. On the season, yep, was in that in that game in the end zone in Buffalo there, uh, and it was still had to be a heck of a throw and a heck a, of a catch, an unbelievable, tiny window, yeah, unbelievable throw, great catch. But you know they've got they've got stars at all three levels of that defense. Um, I think their their defensive play callers is as good as it gets, but they got they got kind of punched in the mouth early in that game and throughout the first three quarters of that game. But what happened in the fourth quarter when they had to make plays? They made one. You know, they made they made plays at the end. They created those negative rushes. They created some opportunities in the red zone. They they stopped and and forced Buffalo to kick a field. And by the way, you know, for all those that like, oh, it's wide right, dude. You're gonna you're gonna leave a minute and thirty plus seconds left on the clock. You don't think Patrick Mahomes is gonna drive them down and they're gonna kick a game winning field goal with? six seconds left or they're going to score a touchdown with we'll say of course they were because that's who they are so where are we at with buffalo what's the what's the takeaway where does buffalo go from here i mean just an absolute yeah. soul crushing gut punch of a loss because this was supposed to be the year we were at home the momentum was mm -hmm. with us kansas city was vulnerable and yet it's the same old same old where do they go from here yeah uh, it's an interesting question I think you look at their six and six start and what what transpired from that six and six start. All of a sudden they fire an off offense coordinator. They promote Joe Brady. They start becoming balanced where all of a sudden Josh Allen isn't throwing it 40 times a game. He's throwing it 24, 25 times a game. They're running the football. They're doing some things differently. And what happened? They start winning. They put a streak together. It had nothing to do with apologies to Buffalo had nothing to do with throwing people in the pit of despair it, that that wasn't it it was the way they were calling plays the way they were taking some of that load off of Josh Allen so many times that Josh Allen gets into a game he has to throw it 40 plus times what happens well you know that you have to make a play in those situations that that the entirety of the organization relies on you so there are going to become times when you play hero ball when you throw it into a window that you just flat shouldn't throw it into. And some of those things are going to happen to you. And that's exactly what transpired probably midway through the third quarter into the fourth quarter is you started getting away from what you had been doing that got you that lead, that dominated the line of scrimmage, that did some of those things, and you started relying way too heavily on your quarterback. And I understand why you do because I understand how great he is. Right. So then you have to ask yourself, <clears throat> is Sean McDermott the right guy? Like, are there coaches just like are there quarterbacks or are there players that only have like a, a ceiling and then all of a sudden, you know, they can't get beyond that ceiling? Is that a head coach? And you mentioned this to me this morning, and it really resonated with me. 
is he and, and this is because this sounds offensive and john fox is a good friend of mine like i love john fox but is there a certain for lack of a better guy a certain ceiling to sean mcdermott the idea being this guy can get you you know, all the way to the precipice, but he can't get, get you over, over the, the top. Hump. And we talk about yep. that with different players yep. in different positions, uh, especially the quarterback position. Is this one of those situations where we're talking about that in the coaching profession? He can get you right up to there. I thought the third, I thought the fourth, the uh, fourth down fake punt call from his own 35 with Patrick Mahomes on the other sideline, stupid. Mm-hmm. That was a, it was a desperation call. Now, you sit and you think to yourself, well, well, listen, man, the analytics say, you know, I keep hearing all that. Analytics say this and analytics say this. You know what it says to to your football team, to me, is I'm panicking. I'm panicking. And I got to get, like, I don't trust my defense. I'm pan- I don't trust. And I just, I just don't agree with that philosophical approach to, fo- you don't, you don't give Patrick Mahomes in that offense the ball with 35 yards or 40 yards to go for a touchdown. You just don't. Right. Now I know it, it worked out because they had the they had the Hardman fumble out out of the end zone, which came back to them. But I just don't I don't believe in that football call. Well, are you at a point right now with the with the Bills because it it's not flattering? You've got you know wise guys like you know me on the radio. Saying that Josh Allen's now Philip Rivers. Hmm. Wins a lot of games, puts up numbers, but can't win the big one. So you're not going to get rid of Josh Allen. You're not going to completely break down sure. the roster. So if you're talking about trying to get the Bills over the hump, what's the one variable you can try mm-hmm. that's different? It's a new coach. Yeah. Especially when you got the Bill Belichicks of the world out there, the Jim Harbaugh's. There might be that idea that, hey, Sean McDermott took us to a certain level. I I used earlier with you, I used the Bulls with the great Bulls teams and Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan. They had Doug Collins. Good coach, okay? But there seemed to be a ceiling as to what they could accomplish with him. Yeah. They they put him aside. They bring in Phil Jackson, dynasty. So I wonder if the the Bills, if they're going to get it done with Josh Allen, if they've now arrived at a point where maybe they got to go in a different direction. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Um I think the other thing, you know, I was a part of an organization here in Denver that relied entirely on John Elway dragging teams yep. to Super Bowls and then getting lambasted in said Super Bowl. And I was part of this team in Denver when Mike Shanahan basically told John Elway, hey, man, you want to win a championship? Then we have to change our approach to the way we play this football game. And we got to take some of the onus off of your you, mm-hmm. and we got to take some of that weight off of your shoulders, and we got to support you, and like you have to let me coach in this fashion. And can a guy who hasn't done that style of coaching, who has basically said, "Hey, it's all on you, Josh. You lead us to the promised land. You take us there." It, can that guy all of a sudden be the same guy that come to you and go, hey, man, we got to change the right. way we do things? Like, I don't know what the answer is. And I like Sean McDermott. I think he's just, he's a hell of a football coach. But um, you got to make a decision as an organization of, of what you're going to have to do. Because, listen, as great as, as as Josh Allen is, and he is great, you know what he's not? He's not Patrick Mahomes. It's just and, the way it is. And Patrick Mahomes isn't going anywhere. Right. Patrick Holmes is 28 years old. That's scary. And been to six straight By AFC way, championship how games. How scary is that for the rest of the <laughs> Well, I was well, we live say, here in Denver. I was going to say the AFC about the the rest of the NFL. This is a guy who's been to six straight AFC championship games. He's not 29 yet. Yeah. He's just now theoretically entering his prime. Yeah. Good freaking luck. Yeah. Everybody. 